good to, to understand each of your journeys in terms of um, not every, I mean, I, 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 it's a question, would you, as a startup, um, if you could avoid getting outside investors and bootstrap it yourself and go through, I mean, is that, is that the dream of, 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 of an entrepreneur or is it, at what point in time do you say, actually, my journey is going to be easier with a, a strategic partner or a financial partner and then in South Australia, what's been your experience of well, where do you go? You know, who, where do you get that advice from? How do you find out the different venture capital uh, seed funders or angel funders? What's the Yeah, okay, the I'll, 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 I'll leave off. <laughs> um, look, for us, it was really critical that we got outside funding. Uh, you know, grants only do go so far. Uh, and, and really, we were at this stage where we had a few customers. Um, they were using what we produced quite heavily, but we needed to maintain quite a large development team. Uh, and it was really, you know, we, we really had to exit the, the research centre. We needed to be at a significant scale. So it really wasn't a question of do we take funding or do we don't take funding. It was if you want to win the business, if you want to grow the business, then we need to be able to support the, the team that we need to do that. Uh, and so, yeah, that's why we went out and, and sought uh, venture funding. Um, we actually brought in an advisor. Um, he, was, he was sort of a, a board member on the CRC, but he was quite au fait with how to go through that that funding process how to meet people what's a pitch need to look like um, and the other thing I, I, I could, should say and I didn't mean to I forgot to say but the, the, the grant applications that we went through really set up us up really really well and I remember um, when we were applying for the tech NSA grant and the accelerating commercialization grant both our advisors then saying you know we've heard that once you go through this process you'll understand you know the market you'll understand your business case you'll understand you know the challenges that you're going to face in growth and it's absolutely true it's all the questions we had to answer through that grant application process were the same questions that the investors wanted to answer as well so um, I think we were really well placed to go through that process. Um, I don't know. For me, it's hard to answer this question because I would never personally start a startup that doesn't go as big <laughs> that you don't need VCs. Okay, so I found that it's the same hard work to build a startup bootstrapping <laughs> that build a startup with a VCs. And I like the second type. I need to launch hundred satellites, so there is no way I can bootstrap it. I'm afraid. Okay, unless I throw them for free in space. So I knew that day one was a, not a bootstrapping exercise. I've built my business, we are co-founder, you bootstrap a company up to five, 500 employees. So he has experienced both of the, the, the side of the apple. Um, they are very different. I already can not even compare. Like I had VC since day one in my life and it's like um, you get money and they tell you to put them on fire. So now you got money, you go one and three years, put them on fire and go. So it's exciting, <laughs> but that's what you have to do. So I think, uh, in generally speaking, the reason why in South Australia we got this big VC is because we went global day one, big vision, massive vision, and even thinking about Australia, just thinking about the world, massive trends, and, and VC likes these things. Um, there is, um, could have had bootstrapped, I just, I just can't see myself bootstrapping anything, not because I don't know business, just because the ambition is too big. You know, the dream is too big. So you need to just get a lot of support and inspiration. And every time you get around, you just have to make it 10 times bigger and 20 times, 100 times bigger. And I find that excitement of having millions of dollars that have two years to spend and one have you had to spend them launching 10 satellites is just, that's innovation in the pure state. That's when you got pressure, you got stress, you got limited resources, you got limited time. I think that's when energy kicks in and you're like, just achieve the most exciting innovations you can ever imagine. So answer your question, I don't know, you get the money outside, I guess. <laughs> Do it big. Um, I'd say I've kind of had two different experiences. My experience in London, like we, we were fortunate enough to start making Facebook games back in 2008 when Facebook first moved to London and um, we had an incredible chairman um, called Dickie Dale who used to run the media desk of Citibank and literally he believed in us as a team of people who'd come from kind of television and games and and he basically single-handedly pulled together the most amazing group of angel investors 
uh, that we could have ever hoped for um, out of the game genres that we worked in. So we had like the head of EMI Music and, and, and a load of the England football team and Tim Cahill from here. And so we had loads of footballers because we made a football game and we had people from music and we had people from film and, but that was all under EIS. And, but it was amazing, like I've never experienced the same rush as when Facebook, when, when they weren't evil at one point in time, they were really amazing. And they developed like in London in 2008, they were the first company I ever saw turn up. They did these things called Facebook developer garages, which is basically what's turned up into these meetups. And like they made an ecosystem and they helped us to raise like serious amounts of money. And it was so exciting and they, they also then stripped all that money off us a couple of years later, which is not such, that was when they turned evil, but it was great. And, um, but I, I'd say I've never, like there was EIF, there was an instrument in the UK that basically meant um, that our investors were, their downside was really protected. Um, but there was just like, yeah, we raised quite a significant amount of money from high net worth individuals. And that doesn't seem to be quite the same here in Australia. It's very different here. So um, that feels very different, but was very exciting when it happened with Facebook. Um, the other thing that I, like we're in ag tech, and actually there's only a small number of VCs that either are impact investors or really understand the space and understand the kind of long-term nature of agriculture. So Artesian are one, Tenacious Ventures are another, the CSIRO um, um, uh, main sequence, they invest in some deep tech stuff in, in our space. But yeah, so it's very, very different in ag tech. But no, very happy with like having support. SVG, again, having that little bit of, I've never worked with Californians before, and that's been a real eye-opener um, in, a, in a good way and really pushed us. So yeah, again, not, not nowhere near as much money as Flavia, but it's great to have a bit of a rocket up you. Uh, yeah, to kind of get on with it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. to make Literally. you think a bit bigger. And, and yeah, and they really do encourage you to kind of think big. And that's made us think like we can make, we, there's no reason why this can't make any farmer in the world by 2030 capable of precision agriculture. But it needs sometimes that different perspective from elsewhere just to go like, hey, look up a bit and, and try and go big. So if you're a founder and you've funded it to a certain level and your friends and family are all saying, this is great, go for it. If then you get to the next stage and it's maybe not the right thing to walk in and speak to a venture capital fund here in Australia or, or overseas. Where do you find funding in Adelaide or in South Australia to take it to that next level? But it, maybe it's not really grants. And it's, and it's not grants. So you've tested grants. <laughs> and that's, that's as much as, as far as you've come. Like, have you had experience or know of other, other, other companies? And where do you go? Like, how do you find angel investors and seed investors here. here. I think angels investors are um, hidden. That's the really big struggle in Australia and South Australia. So before entering into the um, investors world, I'm like, where are these people? Like, how do we find them? And still, but once you're in, you know everyone. I like, yeah, like just two days ago, oh, where were the people? So it's very, very hidden. And it's really a pity because a uh, uh, great opportunity from, from startups and from investors is about funnel. You need to talk with a lot of people and you need to learn and make mistakes and talk and invest. And you know, even angel investors, they need to spread their risks, invest in different things. But if they don't know we exist and you don't know you exist, the match doesn't happen, right? So, so, so how is that profile building? If you're a startup, how do you get, get profile? I don't know. I think what we did is, um, it's, it's hard to say, you know, because in, in my case, such a big startup, you know, such a space startup led by a woman, <clears throat> it's terrible to say, but makes PR, you know, so we're all the newspapers, so people read about you, so you're very exposed, very exposed. Customers helped. Customers were talking with everyone. Customers were a great channel. Um, I skipped angel investors, I don't know. Someone have angel investors? You can 